perhaps the most important aspect and the most serious problem in the monetary system is money limitation. Many times you have heard that there is no money for research to feed the population and for other problems. The main challenge in getting funding for serious studies to combat aging is that there are only three types of community, types of source of such funding, and two of them are really not well placed to be putting this money in yet. One of those is public funding, the government. They're not well placed to put money into this in a big way yet because there really aren't enough votes in it. People are still too ambivalent, too scared of the idea of a post-aging world and too skeptical about whether it can be done anyway. So they might not appreciate having their taxpayer money spent on the blue sky pipe dreams, so to speak. Um, another potential source of money is the private sector, but there the problem is that the time frames are rather long from the point of view of making serious money. People who want an exit strategy, they'd like to be able to get out and have their profits within, let's say, 10 years. And it's a bit difficult to structure a much longer time frame project in a manner that is compatible with that. But that's actually becoming more realistic as time goes on. The third main potential source of funding is private individual philanthropy. And that's the area that I've been focusing on because I think it's much more realistic. People who don't have an electorate or shareholders um, can make their own decisions. And also those people are often much more far-sighted and visionary and able to understand the value of all of this. So the main funding that we've received in the Methuselah Foundation so far has been from philanthropic sources. And that is accelerating as time goes on, as people become more comfortable with this and more familiar with it. There's all this talk about investing in medical breakthroughs, pre pre predominantly through the National Institute of Health. That's the primary sort of government agency for medical research. What I caution is, fine, we all want to live healthy. No, that's not even here to debate. But keep in mind that if you take a tour through a hospital and look at every machine with an on-off switch that is brought into the service of diagnosing the human condition, that machine is based on principles of physics discovered by a physicist in a machine designed by an engineer. Nowhere in that equation was there a medical doctor or a medical researcher. And so you can't just fund one branch of scientific inquiry. You have to fund them all. Because these advances, for example, the MRI came from principles of physics discovered by a physicist who had no interest in medicine. That wasn't his point. That wasn't what drove him. Yet it has this marvelous application that we could diagnose or at least probe inside your body without cutting you open first. So the cross-pollination of disciplines is fundamental to truly revolutionary advances in our culture. And so you can't fund any one thing without the other. But think about what money actually is. 
Money is not a resource. They're uniquely colored papers that represent a measuring unit for resources. Unfortunately, money is regarded in reverse. In the West, we inherit the idea of law from those ancient conceptions of God, and it is even passed down into science, where we discuss laws of nature. But one recognizes more and more in the sciences that what we call laws of nature are simply observed regularities in the way things behave. And you, in order to observe regularities, you must look at things through something regular. That is to say, you must lay a ruler alongside them or compare their behavior with the regular behavior of a clock. But clocks and rulers are human inventions. They are regular measures which we use for comparing the rates of change. Say, a clock is a measure of a rate of change. It's quite arbitrary. But we very easily compare our regulation measuring devices with what makes things happen. As if the sun rises because it's six in the morning. Now that's being completely backwards in one's thinking. And we get into the same confusion when we imagine, for example, that money is wealth. Here we have fantastic wealth, you know, and uh, we have the technological possibility of making everybody on earth the enjoyer of an independent income. We can't do it because people say, where's the money going to come? Because they think money makes prosperity. It's the other way around. It's, it's, it's physical pro uh, uh, prosperity, which has money as a way of measuring it. But people think money has to come from somewhere, like uh, hydroelectric power or lumber or iron, and it doesn't. Money is something we invent, like inches. So you remember the Great Depression? When uh, there was a slump? And what did we have a slump of? Money. There was no less wealth, no less energy, no less raw materials than there were before, but it's like you came to build, work on building a house one day, and they said, sorry, you can't build this house today, no inches. What do you mean no inches? Ah, just inches. We don't mean uh, we got inches of lumber, yes, we got um, inches of metal, we've even got tape measures. But there's a slump in inches as such, you see? And people are that crazy. They, they can have a depression. Uh, because they've got, got no inches to go around, or, or, or no dollars. <laughs> That's all a lot of nonsense. <laughs> but you see, because we get thinking backwards, uh, making the uh, metaphysical tail wag the dog, making uh, the law rule things, whereas it doesn't, it's merely a way of measuring what happens. Money not only represents practically nothing because of the advanced technology that can create abundance, but is a negative factor for people, as we have seen in the scientific demonstration about the real motivator for humans. Most of the time, technology exists, people exist, and resources exist, but there isn't enough money. Is this because people are unwilling to help solve societal problems? We have seen that humans are motivated by the purpose of their work, and improving society is a worthy purpose. So where does the real limitation lie? Focusing on the purpose of work and using technology to organize the world more intelligently based on the Earth's caring capacity.
It's weird and shocking how many human beings do not realize the true value of this paper. We limit ourselves because of money without realizing it. This slows down our discovery of the universe and our existence. If the main organization on planet Earth does not focus on discovering the mystery of their existence, then this means that either the human species is not an intelligent one, or the organization itself is the one to blame.